All right. Um, so Psalm seventy-eight. Uh, Anthony Panza, can you read the first four verses, and then Sydney, can you read the highlighted verses for me? Okay. All my people, listen to my instructions. Open your ears to what I'm saying, for I will speak to you in a parable, or in yeah. I will teach you hidden lessons from our past, stories we have heard and known, stories of our ancestors handed down to us. We will not hide these truths from our children. We will tell the next generation about the glorious deeds of the Lord, about his power and mighty wonders. For he issued his laws to Jacob, and gave his instructions to Israel. He commanded our ancestors to lead, teach them to their children, so the next generation might know them, even the children not yet born. They, in turn, will teach their own children, so each generation should set its hope on a new God. Not forgetting as Glorious miracles and obeying his commands. Okay, so what are these verses saying to us? What are they saying? Harder. To teach the next generation of God. Okay. Why? Uh, it just means so each generation should set so that we won't die. Good, that's good. What else? Uh, it's the question um, each, so like we can uh, focus on God so each generation can, can continue to focus on God. Good. Really good. Okay, so verse 4 talks about we will not hide the, these truths from our children. So this is not just like information, um, ideas. This is, these are truths. These are very important things that we're passing along, right? Um, and Carter hit verse 7. So each generation should set its hope anew on God. Have you um, have you been in church or maybe somewhere else where you've heard a story multiple times? You've heard, for example, uh, we've heard the story of Jonah many times, right? For those of us who kind of grew up in church, we know the story of Jonah. But have you been in a situation where you're like, oh, I never understood God's mercy the way I do now because of how I've heard this story again. Or God's uh, gaining my attention through some pretty crazy circumstances. Sometimes he needs to do that because I'm not paying attention. Right? And so when we look at so each generation should set its hope anew on God. This is kind of like a refreshing. It's like, I've heard this before. Maybe I haven't heard it, but maybe I have. And I just need to renew, or God needs to renew my understanding of who he is and who I am because of who he is. So this kind of, basically, yes, this says, I need to understand what my parents understood. And I need to learn these things so that I can pass them along to my children. Now, what is interesting, and in preparing for uh, today, as I was thinking about those verses in Psalm 78, I was thinking about 2 Kings 22. Now, do you guys know the story of Josiah? Who is Josiah in the Bible? Carmen. Like a kid who was also a king kid who was a king, right? So he became king at the age of eight. And as you can see, as you can read, reigned in Jerusalem for 30, 31 years. Now, what's interesting about this is in verse 3, it says, in the 18th year of his reign, he sent his secretary to basically go check on the renovation of the temple. Okay? So they're renovating the temple. He sends his secretary, he's probably 26. You guys... Do you guys have uncles or cousins or even siblings that are 26 and that 25 to 6 or 7 in that range? Okay. So you guys at least can picture somebody this is good. Okay, so he sends his uh, he sends his secretary to go check on the temple. They're at the temple, the secretary's at the temple, runs into the priest, and they make sure that everybody's getting paid. Right? You need to get paid, you need to make sure that the temple is being built. And the priest is like, oh, by the way, I found the book 
of the law in the temple of the Lord. We're like, how do we lose the book of the law? In Psalm, we read, David, Solomon, somewhere in that generation, we're talking about making sure that each generation understands who God is and what he's done for us as Israelites. And somehow, in the course of time, we have literally lost the book of the law. Like, in the floor of the building, in the wall, somebody thought it would be a good time capsule. I don't know. Like, well, how, do, how do you lose something that, that important, right? Well, the Israelites, for those, again, those of you who are familiar with the direction the Israelites were going, they basically intentionally decided we were not going to follow. We're not going to follow God. We have our own ideas about how we should live and the way we want to live. So they kind of intentionally gave up on following. Gave up on following the Lord. And so when we think about history and processing who, for for those of us who are Americans, right? What, what United States history looks like. But for the world, what does world history look like? And when we think of how we interpret history from a biblical standpoint, these things are, these things are important because you're going to go to college and you're going to get a not, likely a not Christian view of of the world, right? That that there isn't there isn't purpose beyond what you make of it. And I know, as a believer in Christ, that I have purpose, and that I see the world. I get to see the pe- get to see people in a way that God sees people. And I don't do it well all the time. Right? I'm human. I'm messed up. I see things the way I want to see them sometimes, a lot of times. But we have the opportunity in this class to see with the mind of Christ. So we are going to take what we read in Psalm 78, this idea that we get to, and it's serious and it's truths, look at history of the world and make sure that we understand it so we can do well with what God has given us. 